Today we are going to go over 11.4, which is use geometric probability. And so our goal is to use lengths and areas to define geometric probabilities. Probability. A probability is a number from 0 to 1 that describes how likely an event is to occur. It can be expressed as a fraction, decimal, or percent. The probability of any event, let's say event A, is written as P, which is probability, and then the event would be in parentheses. So the probability of event A is written as P of A. I have a nice little timeline here for you. Um, if your probability is equal to zero, that means it's impossible, it will not happen. If your probability is equal to one, it is certain that it will happen, 100%. If your probability is 0 0.5, that would be 50%. So it's equally to occur or not to occur. I have a class of 14 girls and 12 boys. What is the probability I would select a random student and it would be a girl? So our question here is, what is the probability that a student would be a girl? So first we need to look at the total number of girls in the class. 14. So 14 is going to be in my numerator. Divided by the total number of students. Well, there are 14 girls and 12 boys. So 14 plus 12 is equal to 26. You can leave your answer as a fraction like this or you can simplify it as a decimal, which would be 0 0.54, which is also equal to 54%. So there are three ways that you could write this. Geometric probability is a ratio that involves a geometric measure, such as length or area. So for our next problem here, what is the probability that my spinner will land on green? If you look at my spinner, you will notice that each section is marked by a degree. So we have 80 degrees in red, 45 degrees in green, 60 degrees in blue, 75 degrees in purple, and 100 degrees in yellow. Knowing that this is a circle, or if you just add up all the degrees, you will see that the total degrees is 360. So for our first problem here, we want to find what is the probability that the spinner will land on green. Well, the percent for green here we see is 45 degrees. So 45 divided by the total number of degrees, which we already said was 360. So you can keep your answer like that, or you can simplify this. And to simplify this decimal, you can just plug it into, I'm sorry, simplify this fraction. You can just plug it into your calculator, and you would get 1 -eighth. Now let's look at the probability that it will land on purple. Well, if we look at purple, we see the percent is 75. I'm sorry, not percent, the degree is 75. So 75 divided by 360, that is your answer. You don't have to simplify it, but if you'd like to, this does simplify to 5 over 24. So either of those I would accept. Next, what is the probability that a dot placed randomly on this segment would be between C and D? Well, first, let's look at the distance between C and D. And our distance is 4. So that's going to be in the numerator. We're going to divide that by the total distance between A and D. So we have to add up 5, 12, and 4 together. And when you do that, you get 21. And that's our answer. How about between D and B? Well, D and B is this entire segment. So here, 
we are going to have to add up 12 and 4. Well, 12 plus 4 is 16. So 16 is going to go in my numerator divided by the total length, which we already found in the previous answer, which is 21. Let's try something a little bit more difficult. So use lengths to find a geometric probability. We want to find the probability that a point chosen at random on segment PQ is on R, or segment RS. So we want to find the probability that the point is on segment RS. Well, that would mean we need to figure out what is the length of segment RS. And we're going to divide that by the length of segment EQ. So what we're going to do here is let's start with the distance from R to S. All right, so I'm just going to count here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So my answer here at the top is going to be six. Divide that by the total distance from P to Q. Same thing, I'm just going to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten is going to be in the denominator. So we can keep it like that, or if you'd like to simplify this, it's also equal to three-fifths. And you could also write it as a percent if you would prefer that, 60%. Next, we're going to find the probability that a randomly chosen point in the figure lies in the shaded region. Well, how many shaded pieces are there? One, two, three, and four. And how many total pieces are, are there? So we already counted four. Five, six, seven, eight. So four out of eight, which is equal to one half. And you could also say 50%. Well, what if we have a figure that looks like this? Uh, we want to find the probability that a randomly chosen point in the figure lies in the shaded region. If you look, our shaded region are these two triangles here. So I'm going to outline this. To find the probability, we want the part divided by the whole. So let's first find the area of one of the triangles. If I look at this triangle here, to find the area, I need to figure out what that piece is, and I'll call that x. Well, if that piece is x, we also know that this little piece right here is also x. Looking at our rectangle, we see that The distance from both of my red lines are 14. Because if this is equal to 14, this is also equal to 14. You'll also see that the entire distance here is equal to 20. So if I do 20 minus 14, that gives me 6. So x plus x then is going to equal 6. Well, that's really 2x is equal to 6, meaning x is equal to 3. So now, if I redraw this triangle, I know that this is 12, this is 3. So the area of this triangle is equal to 1 half times 3 times 12, which is equal to 18. Well, I don't just have one triangle, I have two. So, 18 times 2 is equal to 36. That is my area of the shaded region. 
Well, we need to find the total area of the entire figure. Well, let's look at the area of this rectangle. The area of a rectangle is length times width. So 14 times 12 is equal to 168. So to find the total, I'm going to add 168 to 36. So let me write that out. So the probability that our point is going to lie in the shaded region that's equal to the area of both triangles divided by the area of the figure. Well, we said the area of both triangles is equal to 36. The area of the figure is 36 plus 168, which simplifies to 244. So that is our answer. But you could also simplify this to 3 over 17, which is approximately 18%. And that's our final answer. Last problem. Find the probability that a randomly chosen point in the figure lies in the shaded region. So we're trying to figure out the probability that our point lies in the shaded region. If we look at our figure, the shaded region is made up of a square, and we're going to have to subtract the area of the circle. So I'm going to write that out. So it's going to be the area of the square minus the area of the circle divided by well, our entire figure is a square, so divided by the area of the square. So the area of the square is equal to length times width, which if you look at your figure, it's 10 times 10, which equals 100. The area of the circle is equal to pi r squared. So we need to figure out what is the radius. Well, if you notice, the diameter is 10. So if the diameter is 10, that means that the radius is equal to pi. So this simplifies to pi times pi squared which is 25 pi. I'm just going to keep it like that as an exact answer for right now. So now let's plug this back into our probability. So area of the square, we said was 100, minus the area of the circle, which is 25 pi, divided by 100. We can't keep that as a fraction because of pi. So we're going to try to approximate this. So if you plug this into your calculator, we get approximately 21.46%. And that is our final answer.